Welcome to Pitch Brand Talk, where insights meet innovation in the world of brands. Today, I'm very happy to host Mr. Vineet Vishwambaram, Vice President for Marketing and Sales at Adani Wilma, the same brand that is the parent company for your beloved Fortune. Hello, Mr. Vishwambaram. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, and it's a pleasure to be with you. It's an absolute pleasure for me as well. So, Mr. Vishwambaram, can you please highlight some of the recent campaigns that you know have resonated with your audience at large, and what were the key elements that made these campaigns successful? Yeah, so I think uh, let, I'll talk about some of our recent initiatives uh, and what kind of consumer thinking went behind them. Maybe I'll pick a pick a few. So uh, we've re- recently launched uh, a value-added uh, mustard oil offering called uh, Pehli Dhar Gachi uh, Gani So we we had the choice of uh, calling this uh, something like let's say pole pressed. But we deliberately made the choice to call it a pehli dhar. I think uh, the, the the reason was that when we spoke to consumers, we realized that uh, food culture in India does not change very dramatically the way that uh, you know let, let's say technology technology adoption happens. So there could be a lot of disruptive changes in technology. But when it comes to food, we are we are so strongly rooted that uh, anything new has to kind of get incorporated into the old. So the old, old kind of expands to uh, include the new. So, so therefore, uh, for a for a huge category in India like uh, mustard oil, uh, our idea was to try to upgrade uh, the the uh, discerning sensorial seeking consumers, mm-hmm. and therefore uh, we want to speak in their idiom. We didn't want to use alien terminology that is basically adopted from uh, out of our uh, cultural lingo. So when we thought of it, the category itself is called Kachi Hani, and therefore right. calling it Pehli Dhar uh, was an apt uh, prefix to the already very uh, strongly rooted definition of the category. And uh, of course, the, it is it is the first extract of uh, mustard oil from the choicest seeds, and mm-hmm. it is gently cold pressed uh, using a wooden uh, mortar and pestle. So all this comes together, and, and the challenge of communication actually becomes much lesser. When you have a name itself that describes most of what you have put forth, you know? so, so I think people just got it instinctively. People just understood that the first pressed, pristine few drops, or yeah. the first extract of anything, is normally more aromatic, more flavorful, more sensorially pleasing, richer. And we know this from from multiple uh, produce around us. You know, the first extract is always better. So I think. The right nomenclature has gone uh, uh, a long way in, get, in making people people just instinctively get it when they see the bottle on the shelf, and right. therefore it makes the communication task that much simpler. Right. So it's been very well received, and I think when you're when you're looking at uh, not a niche opportunity, but you're looking at uh, upgrading a substantial premium user base of a very large one of the very large oils in the country, mustard oil, then one has to think of how the traditional mustard oil user. Uh, uh, what what to offer him to get him to upgrade? So I think uh, so I think the thinking of scale, which is so inherent to Adani Wilmar in whatever we do, right. you know, that is what drives us to come up with uh, stuff that that will drive the required upgrading from the huge base of users that we have. Correct. Similarly, I think we've launched recently something called, we've launched uh, a Fortune Sharbati Atta. Mm-hmm. Uh, there again, our proposition has been so when we spoke to consumers. There are, of course, other Sharbati Atta offerings in the market. Right. But people, consumers talk about how in the old days they would choose the choicest grain, go to the mm-hmm. grain mandi, grain store, choose the choicest Sharbati. Uh, and then they would talk about it, uh, and taking it to the neighborhood Chakki. And they would talk about how they would get it ground yeah. uh, in front of their eyes, the right granulation. Uh, but there, there was a lot of uh, uh, conversation or nostalgia about getting it ground in a Chakki and getting right. it ground. You know, apne aankhon ke samne, right. chakki, chakkis were in the old days hand chakkis as well, or even the old mechanical chakkis were are actually pretty slow chakkis. So therefore, yeah. uh, we replicated that process and we called it slow chakki process. Okay. So that, that again, I think, is a traditional belief. So we are just playing into uh, a traditional belief that uh, things, jo, jo hai, se vakt leke ki jati hai, things that you know are done with the right amount of time invested in making them. Uh, yeah. Especially when you have such a special quality of grain, it's very important to treat it right. If you, if you, you know, treat right. it fully, 
you lose the uh, the essence of the grain. So I think these are a couple of recent things that have really, you know, I think uh, the feedback from the market has been very, very fulfilling, satisfying. That, you know, uh, the thought process, the, the the insights that we got and the the thought process that we followed when we were designing the offering, it uh, it is very very fulfilling to know that the market is reacting well and responding to it positively, yeah. going by initial rates of how easy it is to place the products in retail. And how, uh, how 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 good the repeat rates that retailers are uh, rallying, uh, telling us from consumer feedback are, etc. Right. right. Yeah, so there are these are some of uh, recent new uh, actions. I think coming to campaigns, uh, we uh, I think a few months ago, maybe almost uh, uh, nine months ago now, we launched a new uh, campaign for our uh, uh, Chakki Fresh Atta, Fortune Chakki Fresh Atta. Mm-hmm. I think challenge there was and, and now there is enough data and performance uh, to feel very satisfied about the performance i think the the market share growth of uh, our chakki atta offering has been uh, quite spectacular in the past six right. months right. i think again it was it all started with uh, you know it's just been a few years since we launched chakki uh, atta and it has been uh, the first task of uh, establishing uh, the fact that Fortune ka atta bhi atta hai. That was done by the initial campaign. Yeah, yeah. Akshay Kumar uh, was a celebrity, and uh, we we did create uh, awareness about the presence of Fortune Art. Right. But the second task uh, was really to translate or convert this awareness into usage, and therefore, you know, there are strong competitors in the category, both nationally and regionally, and uh, therefore, driving uh, conversion usage, converting the awareness into into actual usage was the challenge for which. Uh, we, we decided we need to, we, we figured we need to have a very strong uh, a functional benefit that we offer mm. along with a good emotional connection. Right. Which is when again we went back to consumers and we had conversations with consumers across North, South, East, West. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to come up with something that was not leveraged so far in the category, but something that was still very relevant. You can find a lot of stuff that is not le- leveraged in the category in communication, but which is not very relevant. Right. So we wanted to find something which is both relevant and which is unused so far mm-hmm. came up and we also knew that one of the strengths of our product is uh, that we have consistently high water absorption which makes for uh, softer roti and it makes for easier kneading uh, and therefore as we talked to consumers we figured that ease of kneading was mm-hmm. in fact quite a strong uh, driver of uh, preference in the category driver of choice in the category uh, so the consumers in the north and west said that uh, we are, we, we need a dough every day. Mm, right. But it is not easy. I mean, it does take some amount of effort. You've gotten used to it. And yeah. therefore, it is kind of, you're not very conscious about the effort. But mm-hmm. when you ask us, yes, it is effort. And, and mm. easier dough is certainly something right. that um, is a benefit. And consumers right. South and uh, East, they told us many of them uh, are from rice table geographies for whom needing is an even more uh, uh, unpleasant task, you know, something that yeah. is more is drudgery. So therefore, uh, they they found it extremely relevant. So we hit upon something that uh, ease of needing, which was something that uh, was relevant across the country, and, right. then, and then we wanted to give uh, give it uh, give it something that makes it uh, create some empathy and you know emotional connection, which is where uh, we went to you know uh, we understand that earning your daily bread is hard. Yeah, but at least making your daily bread shouldn't yeah so that is where fortune can help you and i think uh, the, that's the, an interesting yeah i think the awareness goes mind measures uh, have uh, in terms of ad recall as well as in terms of overall awareness consideration for the brand have done extremely well right. Uh, right. so the so, same Sorry, sorry, you were saying something. I think that those are some of the recent things that have been giving us some uh, degree of satisfaction. Right. You mentioned that, you know, uh, Fortune Ka Aata Bhi Aata Hai was an awareness that you wanted to create among your consumers because it is relatively newer, newer than your Kachi Ghani portfolio. And I, I mean, it is safe to say that Kachi Ghani oil and Fortune have sort of become, you know, synonymous to each other, pan India now. But uh, when it comes to Aata specifically, because it's a newer, newer you know, um, product portfolio that you're working on. So uh, then in that case, a lot of competitors are also going with chakki atta and also you know 
this is the sherbati we data and chakki data so then how do you you know navigate through that competition one and then how important does pricing becomes there right so i think there is no substitute for uh, having a product that is better and a product that is consistently better i think in the staple foods uh, commodity space uh, consistency is also very important because one of the key challenges is you are dealing with an agricultural raw material uh, wheat in this case and uh, the quality uh, the characteristics of that keep changing because it is a it is at the end of the day uh, uh, agricultural produce so depending upon the climatic conditions and the rainfall etc you, you will have differences so the challenge is how do you uh, ensure that despite the the variability in the raw material how do you ensure that the consumption experience or the roti experience is absolutely consistent that is where i think sourcing blending r and d quality uh, and and being dynamic you know you can't just fix one blend ratio and be be done every year based on the kind of crop that's coming you need to keep changing your blend profiles etc so i think that is so, so what what you see as success at the market end i think there is a lot of deep rooted value chain expertise starting from sourcing uh, to understanding uh, you know what uh, uh, what is the size of crop of various varieties that are available how much should we stock up to secure ourselves uh, on some of the varieties that we use for blending for example and then uh, then uh, you know changing the blend ratios like we said like i said so that that big value chain advantage that delivers a, a consistent product is extremely important because in the staple foods business uh, brands are often built uh, brands are built more by usage and trial uh, and not necessarily through advertising alone uh, because at the end of the day everybody knows what an atta is there is no education required it's not a new category there's no education required on uh, what an atta uh, atta is but uh, and therefore and everybody has their, has their expectations on how it should perform so therefore the usage experience uh, being satisfactory and mm-hmm. consistently so i think that is one of the key things on brand adoption because consumers may flirt with the brand uh, they may use it uh, once and then uh, or they may use it repeatedly and find it inconsistent i think so usage and consistency are, are the absolute key things uh, as far as uh, 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 staple food commodity categories are concerned the other thing is how do you drive usage you have to be available uh, okay. so therefore driving consistent growth in distribution uh, equally important is that because we are deep into the value chain we are able to drive cost efficiencies uh, starting from the farm end all the way from farm to fork as the metaphor goes so i think every naya paisa shaved to some efficiency uh, it all contributes to uh, making the product affordable i think right. so along with availability affordability is very important because the growth of these categories is fueled by users of unbranded or loose form or those uh, who used to buy gehu and get it ground uh, mm-hmm. those who are buying loose art you know the upgrading of these consumers is what drives a substantial part of the business so it's very important to be uh, available as well uh, affordable as well so i would say yeah, these three things availability affordability and quality consistency these are the three key drivers that we that we focus on i think if that is not there no amount of advertising and no amount of brand building or emotional connection building uh, can really help right while we are still talking about campaigns being done by you the festive season is approaching and it's the gala time for brands so what are your plans for this festive season and how is it going yeah i think it's also so the festive season kicks off the the consumption cycle in the country i think uh, Uh, these are the good consumption months uh, as the uh, as the summers recede uh, temperatures start falling i think uh, there is uh, consumption starts increasing and peaks towards uh, the end of the calendar year uh, I, i think therefore a lot of our uh, because there is this uh, annual seasonality that exists in most of our categories uh, with the rainfall coming i think consumption starts to go up a lot of our campaigns are, uh, are stacked up around this time so uh, we are uh, at this point in time working on a number of uh, regional campaigns so uh, we 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 are uh, uh, working uh, in a fashion that is uh, very authentic to the various states that uh, uh, we have our specific marketing objectives in uh, so uh, the model of working is typically we engage uh, with uh, consumers of the region uh, firstly to come up with uh, what would be a good communication insight 
what really are the drivers of choice in the category uh, what are the benefits of the consumer seeks what are the current challenges in the category so that work starts well in advance which uh, we are well we are a few months uh, past that we, we are beyond all that and right now we are in the stage of communication development uh, so we are there are various campaigns there are maharashtra specific campaigns there are gujarat specific campaigns there is tamil nadu specific campaign there is a bengal specific campaign for different categories depending on business objectives and they are all very very strongly rooted in uh, in local idiom uh, mm-hmm. and and uh, they are typically for uh, uh, locally relevant products for example like uh, the the non basmati rice variants in in, in eastern india uh, mm-hmm. or uh, you know there is a product category of uh, rava also called suji in the rest in the north of the country rava it's called in the south which is a substantial category in the south so there is that is something that we are working on uh, for the south uh, besan is uh, is a very high per capita consumption cap- uh, category in the uh, west in gujarat and maharashtra so that's something that we are working on right now so yeah you will find a strong uh, very strong local flavor uh, in some of the upcoming stuff uh, okay. of course everything is integrated at the level of uh, uh, the brand's uh, central thought in terms of both uh, in terms of central thought and look and feel and design language visual identity everything uh, you will find the central ideas of the brand uh, translating seamlessly into the vernacular be it fortune or kohinoor or any of our brands uh, for example our ghar ka khana ghar ka khana hota hai central brand idea uh, in our last year's uh, south campaign translated into something called kai mana kai mana for those who know tamil actually means haat ka jadoo ma ke haat ka jadoo so so we are looking for those right phrases by which uh, uh, our communication ideas can transcend languages uh, so yeah so that is what we are our did work now on many right. other regional pieces right uh, for a brand you know that is you know a traditional brand in nature it's not a digital first brand per se how do you sort of balance digital and traditional you know mixes in your campaigns to you know sort of achieve maximum reach and impact with your audience right so i think see the uh, it's not uh, necessarily true that you for uh, a balance is required for every uh, product offering of yours uh, for example if you if you broadly segment your products into let's say we have some products that are pure play digital as of now we have okay. a brand uh, called kohinoor uh, biryani kit uh, ready to cook uh, biryani product uh, which is primarily uh, digital focused we okay. have we have a product uh, of functional health oils called fortune expert which okay. is primarily digital focused uh, so uh, there are some product categories which are so excessively like suppose you if you're offering is pure play digital then you really don't need a balance between traditional and digital uh, right. you need to you need to be uh, uh, you need to be uh, uh, delivering the highest roi to prioritize your spends first to those which are closest to the uh, moment of purchase and try to influence that uh, that particular moment so right. typically typically most of this is on platform on e-commerce platforms uh, right. you already have a volume of business and therefore you're trying to Uh, influence uh, the purchase moment uh, which tends to be relatively highest roi uh, spending on digital and then uh, once you've exhausted that avenue uh, or parallelly you want to do some very focused brand building amongst very sharp targeted uh, geo targeted psychographically targeted behaviorally targeted audiences uh, that is when some of the off platform social media digital media investments come into play right uh, so 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 these there are brands that are primarily that, that spend all their money only on uh, on digital right and then you come to the next rung of brands let's call them so if you call the first one is pure play digital the mm-hmm. next set of uh, product offerings let's call them uh, premium offerings which are primarily in uh, digital uh, on e-commerce or modern format stores or within gt they are amongst the better uh, quality of general trade stores like right. uh, premium or uh, high end grocers or self service format stores etc yeah. and typically these uh, product offerings are in a in a, in a maybe 6 8 10 12 cities not too many cities in the top uh, top 8 10 12 cities in the country so therefore it is all nicely targeted in terms of uh, channels yeah. uh, in terms of cities so there again 
if you from an ROI perspective, of course, the digital investments that we talk about, talked about earlier comes into play. But mm-hmm. equally now, uh, the equivalent of the uh, purchase moment of truth on e-commerce, which is when you're clicking, the equivalent of that is actually shop shelf in uh, oh. in in modern in a modern format store or mm-hmm. a premium browser or a self-service format store. So how do you how do you influence that moment of purchase uh, in an offline store, but right. a very premium offline store? So that's when that again would become the highest ROI spend, uh, right? Uh, rather than you know uh, spraying a lot on uh, dispersed traditional media, it's mm-hmm. very used. Uh, because the problem, one of the problems, one of the great things of having so many media choices is that you have so many media choices. But yeah. one of the flip sides is that you can actually burn a lot of money. You, know, you, can, you can have a lot of spillovers. You can have a lot of wastage. So the way media has grown in this country, it's not that television reach is really coming down fantastically or anything. It's just that the time spent on television is getting devoted to a lot of it is going to digital. So digital is catching up very close to television in terms of reach. But in terms, and, but in terms of the presence of the mediums, they're both there. I mean, it's not that anyone is disappearing. So there are more choices, and therefore it becomes very important. Uh, if you do too much of this balancing, we have to do the perfect balancing. Then you may end up spilling over, uh, uh, wasting a lot of media money. So right, and so, also sensory overload. If you would, I mean, yeah. for the consumer. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so so if you like going uh, further down the product hierarchy from our so-called pure play digital to uh, premium products. And then if you go down, then you have your mass market products, uh, the mainline uh, runners, which are urban and rural products, where, of course, uh, uh, television and traditional media uh, become very important in the whole mix because they are uh, large enough in terms of consumption. You know, crores of households use them. So okay. spillover is really not a concern. Uh, they, our products are sold in every third household or more in this in this country. So... We're talking about 12, 13 crore households where our, our products are present. So therefore, yeah. for our for our mass market uh, products, then uh, there is uh, there is no question of wasted when it comes to using uh, right. mass right. media heavily. But and then below that, there are a rural fo- focused products. There are some products like, for example, we have a brand of soap called Alive, which uh, is primarily focused on smaller towns and uh, rural in mm-hmm. many states of the country, which are priority geographies for the brand. And there again, the choice of mediums become different. You know, we're talking about things like wall paintings, like yeah. uh, like Pani ki Tanki ka wraps. I don't know if you've seen Panchayat, but uh, the Pani ki Tanki on top of Panchayat, similar uh, similar Pani ki Tankis are there in many villages. In the course. It becomes that. It becomes uh, uh, cinema, not not uh, multiplexes, but single screen cinema. Mm-hmm. You know, so 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 I think we so we look at uh, striving the right uh, striking the right balance, not necessarily. For every product offering, there has to be a balance of both. It depends on. Of course. Yeah, so, so that is the approach we are following. Trying to maximize right. our ROI. And for that, whatever is the right balance, uh, mm-hmm. we try to that balance. Right. And uh, would you please also share some you know, growth metrics with us in terms of brand awareness increase and market share? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. So I think you are, if you look at our overall growth this year if you've seen our uh, q1 press release you know that the uh, growths have been healthy yeah. our uh, oil business has grown by uh, 12 watt percent uh, in volume terms and our food business has grown by 42 percent uh, so business growth has been very healthy uh, similarly okay. uh, market share growth, growths have been healthy too uh, our oil business i think uh, same period over same period has grown by six to eight basis points in terms of market share uh, similarly, um, uh, Arta business has, uh, has grown by almost, I think, almost 90 odd basis points uh, over same period last year. So the growths have been uh, good and the growths have been higher than industry, which is indicated by the growth of market share. And uh, if you look at mind measures also very similarly, I think mind measure growth is even more, uh, is, is leading these uh, these uh, business uh, uh, sales and market share metrics. So if you look at, uh, let's say, a category like uh, Arta, which we talked about. Yeah. Uh, we have seen, uh, and we talked about the campaign, the, the recent new ca- Ruti Ki Mehnat campaign. I think our uh, uh, mind measures, now we are virtually universally, uh, ev- uh, awareness goals are almost universal. 90 plus percent uh, households uh, are aware of Fortune, Chakki, Prashata uh, on a total awareness basis, aided plus uh, spontaneous. Uh, and the numbers were in the mid 80s, like 
six to eight months ago. Now they are ninety percent plus. Uh, right. No, in uh, right. I think uh, this is uh, uh, this is I think uh, over two quarters of uh, pre campaign and now. If you look at spontaneous awareness, those numbers also now more than half the country uh, is spontaneously aware. These mm. numbers are about fifty two odd percent uh, in the, the Jan Feb March quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, and the quarter just before that, October, November, December quarter, when the campaign broke, I think it was in the mid 40s, 45 odd percent was spontaneous awareness. So spontaneous awareness numbers also jumped substantially. Uh, I think 45 to 50 plus is quite a substantial jump. Right. So we are seeing mind measure growth, and similarly, ad recall and branded cut through of the ads and all that have also been uh, the growths have been really, really uh, uh, very, very encouraging, and uh, and they have, like I said, also led to business and share road. Oil also we are, I think our, uh, of course, our uh, uh, total awareness is universal. There is virtually nobody in the country who does not know about fortune oil. Uh, but even if you look at spontaneous awareness, I think the numbers are far ahead of 80%. They are 80% plus uh, spontaneous awareness. And uh, I think the second brand after fortune would be uh, a third or a fourth of uh, fortune spontaneous awareness numbers. So fortune is way ahead in terms of uh, my shares right yeah, right so i mean those are those numbers speak for themselves but uh, i mean that also makes me wonder what are your biggest markets for oil and also for ata and related to uh, products so i think we are well and truly now pan indian there were yeah. some geographies that uh, that we had uh, we, we, we were uh, uh, weak i mean substantially weak i think over the past year year and a half uh, we are we are uh, now a player everywhere. We are not uh, a, a non-existent player anywhere. I think across the country, uh, we are truly a national brand now. Of course, uh, there are regions of uh, weak of uh, relative lower market shares, uh, but uh, over the past year, like we have made substantial inroads in the south, in the mm. in in food particularly, and also in oil over the over the past one year. Uh, I think it's been it's it's been really. Uh, pretty special the, the growth that we have got there. Right. I think they have been uh, driven through a combination of uh, combination of consumer offers uh, as well as uh, communication and regional tonality that I talked to you about a little earlier. We talked about Kaimanam for the South. Yes. I think it's uh, and of course there are uh, we've had uh, we have a number of very strong uh, legacy brands in the South in, in yes. all these categories uh, and it's uh, it's no mean feat you know. Uh, Getting uh, consumer inertia, overcoming the consumer inertia to switch and get come to our brands, but it's been hugely satisfying. I think there's been quite spectacular growth, to be honest, in the south. So yeah, so I think there are regions with lower market shares, but uh, I would I would say that we are now we are, we are a player everywhere. Also, uh, I mean, for a marketer today, uh, every decision is guided by data points and consumer insights. So at Fortune. I mean, how do you how do you look at uh, you know uh, cu customer insights and how do you sort of leverage them to sort of guide your decisions when it comes to marketing? So there are a few guiding principles which are Adani Wilmar's uh, principles that whatever we do, we want to do at scale. Uh, we want it to touch the lives of Indians at large, and uh, we're not trying to do niche things. We're trying to do things that are relevant to uh, to the middle classes. Uh, you know stuff that is uh, that creates large household penetrations across the country. So that is number one. So I think that ultimately guides the thinking when you when you say that whatever we do has to be uh, big in scale. Uh, mm -hmm. Either the category already exists today, which is big in scale, or it is potentially something that that could become big in right. the future. Uh, so that automatically means that uh, your thinking has to. Uh, has to come from creating offers that are affordable. You cannot think of two niche offerings. You have to create things that are affordable and offer true value. Uh, and that, uh, that, that actually, uh, even if it is a value added premium product, uh, the value uh, uh, offered is substantial uh, compared with the, uh, the price that you're charging. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of this comes from, like I said earlier, a lot of value chain advantage is one. Is of course we are a player from farm to folk in every category that we enter. Uh, secondly, we are not only in the consumer segment; we are also wherever there is consumption, uh, 
we leverage uh, all the avenues of uh, avenue, avenues where our product could get consumed. So that could be in home in the form of uh, branded packaged uh, products. It could also be in home in the form of loose product because we also sell bulk packs and therefore mm-hmm. consumers uh, who are who would like to buy loose commodities from the neighborhood grocer, uh, they could actually buy our products in loose form as well. There is uh, then the out of home channel, so there is uh, Oreka channel. There is then the institutional channel where our products uh, become ingredients in uh, processed food or value added products that other companies make. Right. And then we have an export channel. Uh, and then we, we also sell uh, uh, some byproducts as feed, uh, animal feed. So we have this. So, so because we are into these multiple channels, we are able to actually extract uh, uh, a lot of value in the, in the supply chain value chain. Because right. Multiple streams of products are all sold to relevant channels to uh, product adaptations. And finally, I think we are see with, uh, men, uh, increasingly we have uh, manufacturing locations uh, integrated uh, together for multiple product categories. So integrated plants, which means that our supply chains are more efficient. Uh, right. Products uh, products from our plants actually all go in, in combined form to our distributors. And our distributors are the same for all the food FMCG products we sell. Our uh, uh, consumers also the same because at the end of the day, most of the products we sell are all kitchen ingredients. So yes. we don't have different target consumers for different product categories that we sell. Uh, so it's all the same. Uh, primarily, we are into kitchen ingredients uh, and uh, upstream products uh, based on the kitchen ingredient products that we are in. Right. So I think all this uh, creates a very, uh, uh, very uh, tight space, uh, boundaries within which you know uh, we do our inside creation, generation work, and mm-hmm. we do our uh, offer development work because this thinking is in our heads that, you know, we are thinking scale and we are thinking kitchen ingredients and upstream products from there. So, yeah, we are, and and, uh, and therefore, uh, our inciting is not only uh, on uh, consumer, like I said, there are multiple segments. So, we're also working with uh, institutions to deliver the best products to them as ingredients for their application. We're also working with Horeca to, to with the chefs to to, de- to give them the best uh, food ingredient products for their applications. Right. And uh, a lot of these markets are very nascent. The B two B markets, for example, are quite nascent. Uh, mm-hmm. So I think many of the consumer thinking, uh, much of the consumer thinking capabilities that we have, if those are applied to these B two B channels, I think there is uh, a lot of development of these nascent channels that can happen. Right. So I think yeah, this is broadly it. So when you are so when you have this kind of a framework, I think when you're interacting with uh, with consumers for inside generation, uh, your line of uh, probing, the line of trying to understand uh, what may work or what may not work, you know that all that becomes far more. It, there's a there is direction to it. Right. That's what right. comes from a strong company vision, purpose, you know, strong operating space defined by the company. I think it, you're not going all over the place. You're focused on. What do you want to tell you? All right. Thank you so much for taking the time today. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you and, you know, to understand what you're doing in terms of marketing and fortune. Great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. And thanks for having me.